Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we are looking at the velocity search modes in the F16 and the F18. We're doing them together in one video because it's quite a small thing to look at and they're very similar in how they work. In the F16 it's called VSR, velocity search while ranging. It measures closing velocity of the target, their azimuth and their range. In the Hornet, it's just VS mode, velocity search. It just measures closing velocity and azimuth, but without the range. To show them off as best I can, I've got these two aircraft here, flown by myself. 65 miles away are three targets. They will fly at the same altitude as me, head on towards me at their maximum speed. It's going to be about Mark 1.8 in this case. Right, we'll start in the F-16 from a hot start already set up autopilot on right with our fire control radar on our screen and it's soy so the boxes around it i'm going to pause it there we're going to use our default bvr search mode rws i'm going to knock the range up to 80 miles and pause again first we're going to do this in rws as a control test set at 80 miles azimuth 60 degrees left 60 degrees right and four bars of elevation search that will be our standard i'm going to unpause and as the hostiles come towards us, of course, we'll start seeing them. The way the radar used to work in DCS made this very easy video to make because as soon as you saw a hostile, then that's it. That's when you see the hostile. It's now much more complex with the recent changes in version 2.9. It's now all about probability. So I could see the hostile very far out, but it's a low there. That guy there, it's just, I'm gonna pause it there, has appeared, but the probability of seeing him is actually very low. So the way I've got around that probability problem is I've put three guys in longitudinal formation. So that means that when I see all three, that guy, that guy, and that guy, the probability of actually seeing them is near 100%. That's where I will take my measurement. I hope that makes sense because otherwise seeing just a single contact is very hit and miss, very non-scientific because of that probability. And that's of course how a real radar works. Okay, unpause. So I'm going to wait until all three are visible. I can speed time up because I'm a single player. Two visible, three visible. Pause. Measure the distance from me to them. Oh, wow, look at that. Low 40s, 43, 44 miles. That's when we got a very high probability of seeing them on our radar. Now, out of interest, if I unpause, I can move using my TDC SLU, move my cursor to them. If I press TMS forward slash up once, I lock him, but in a SAM, situational awareness mode, when I can still see the other two guys. If I were to press TMS up again, it goes to STT, just to remind ourselves how this works. And now we can only see the locked hostile. If I were now to press TMS aft or down, then we're back to SAM mode and we can see all contacts again. And that's relevant to what we're about to show. Now we'll reset. This time we'll use VSR mode, uh, 80 miles VSR. Why have I made the hostiles velocity so high is because it just emphasizes the benefits of the VSR. Right, there's one. It would still have benefits if they weren't so fast, but it just exaggerates them. There's two. And there's three. Right, with VSR mode, everything otherwise set the same. 51 miles. So the first one was 43, 44 miles. This is 51 or 52. And like I said, it's all about probability. Sometimes you can run it and you can see them even further. In fact, if I were to refine my search, and you will know this, but I'll go through it anyway. If I were to refine my search, I would be able to see them even further. So if I were to go down to instead of 60 left, 60 right, 10 degrees left, 10 degrees right, and just one bar of elevation, I would see them even further out. Again, the exact figure will change each time I run it. So advantages and disadvantages. Advantage is you get extra range. Disadvantage is the targets have to be relatively nose on. The more nose on, i.e. flying towards me, the better the system is. The less nose on they are, the worse it is to the point where it just doesn't work at all because it's all about closing velocity. The next disadvantage, and this is quite a big one, I think, if I unpause and I were to move my cursor up and lock him, I no longer have SAM mode available, only STT. And I can unlock again, but that is obviously a disadvantage if I can only use STT. Right, F-18. So we've got our 
radar already shown in this screen here. First, we're going to make it soy sensor of interest with our sensor control switch right because it's on the right screen, of course, just a reminder. Now, how do we go into the S mode on the Hornet? What I first thought was you click on that button there and cycle between modes, but look, it doesn't work, at least at the time of making this video. So what you actually have to do with this sensor soy is uh, using your TDC controls, move your cursor onto RWS, and then you can choose the three modes there. Obviously, move it onto VS, and then TDC depress button, ping, and now you're in VS mode. I'm going to pause it there. We can see the three contacts, but this axis here is no longer the range. It's actually the closing velocity, which is really weird to get your head around, I know. So the lower down they are, the lower the closing velocity, so zero, and the higher they are, up to 2400 knots closing velocity. So this is just showing not how close we are, but just the closing velocity. And you're going to want me to prove that, aren't you? So let's go and change the velocity of one of the targets. Uh, this guy here, make him just 900 knots. Click VS and wait for it to populate. Well, you see, there, there you go. That guy's at 900 knots and these guys are at 1,000 and whatever knots. It has the same advantages and disadvantages in that you can not do a situational awareness mode lock. I'm aware it's called something else in the Hornet, but it means the same thing. So if I were to go and lock this guy, move it there, TDC depress, we can see that we're now in an STT lock. We will lose the other contacts. If I refresh the radar by a few seconds, there we go. If I were to unlock, if I can, then it will return to the basic VS, um, that's it. We've shown the advantages and disadvantages of the systems and how to use them and access them. All that remains is to say how we might use these in combat. My understanding is the only time you would really want to use these is if you're heading towards a confrontation where you're pretty sure the hostiles are alert and they are charging towards you, probably at high altitude and high speed. You might want to use this mode for that very first contact to get a lock on them and eyes on them as soon as you can. With the F-18 and velocity search mode, if you call alt at around 40,000 foot, you can probably pick up, but it'll be an unreliable track between 90 and 95 Mordecai bandits that are head on. And in the F-16, between 65 and 75 miles away. But you need to be high and you need to be fast. Roger, so that's a perfect scenario, which is probably what you'll find on a fighter and fighter contact um, first engagement. The only thing to remember, though, in DCS is we only have Charlie Fives, the battery life in them. You're not going to shoot something at 90 nautical miles. The battery will die. It'll get close, though. You might have a tactical use, though, guys. You might be able to just lock a hostile, and that might be a tactical use in itself. An STT is saying, I'm locking you, and that may change his behavior at that long distance. Yeah, that'd be quite good against bombers, just to try and scare them away. But the other thing is, if you could slap mm -hmm. a meteor on these, that this would be a good mode. All right, I think we'll end it there. I hope that was useful, and bye-bye.